We've got um, presentation by Ben Thomas. We've got legacy sentiments in Ferguson Creek watershed in Spartanburg County. Yeah, it should be right on the um, podium. All right, so my project's on legacy sediments in the Ferguson Creek watershed. Uh, I'm Ben Thomas. Dr. Ferguson's my advisor. So beginning in the 1930s, the Soil Conservation Service began doing an intensive study on the state of soil erosion and deposition throughout the Piedmont region. And one of their test locations was here in the southern part of Spartanburg County near the town of Switzer <coughs> inside Ferguson Creek watershed. And so within the watershed, they established um, 40 different test locations or transects. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's little red lines all on the streams. And those are their test locations. Uh, my project focuses here at range 19. It's a 450 foot transect that covers both sides of the stream. And it's uh, located 400 feet upstream from the confluence of Big Ferguson Creek and the South Tiger River. So what are legacy sediments? Uh, the original study was looking to, um, or they found what they called new sediments and have since been changed to call legacy sediments. And these are these reddish brown uh, micaceous uh, silts, which are above a dark gray layer. And um, these have been eroded from upland sources due to human involvement with the land, such as clear cutting, mining, and in this case, agriculture. And uh, it's seen as accelerated rates of erosion because this uh, dark gray layer is the uh, zone where European settlers first walked on. So there's been seven foot of soil that have eroded and deposited here since uh, settlement in the area of the 1760s. Um, and in the original study, started in the 1930s, they uh, established their transects with these iron pipes. Um, I don't know if you can read that. It says R19S. There's another identical one on the other side for the north. And these established the exact locations in which they did their study. And we, we, wrote, we, re, ah, we relocated these uh, iron pipes and established a total station to get a surface elevation profile um, along uh, range 19. And this is what we created. Uh, the black line is the 2016 land surface, and the red line is the 1940 land surface. And what we got from the total station was that there have been uh, slight areas of erosion here at the toe of the slope, but um, it's really minimal uh, for what it should be. And uh, along with that, there's been minimal deposition on both sides of the levees. More significantly than the rates of erosion have been a shift in the river eight feet to the east and also a deepening of the channel by about two feet. Um, so with our cross section established, we went back and using an 18 foot metal probe, we uh, worked that to the ground to measure the thickness of the surface to the uh, uh, bedrock and that gave us thickness of uh, sediments. And uh, this top graph is the 1940 profile that the researchers drew. And this is the one that we created in 2016. Most of the probes are uh, similar in uh, depth. However, um, such as this one right here, we're a little bit deeper. And, and uh, this one, we're a little bit shorter. So, uh, but overall, we uh, created a, a pretty similar diagram. Um, and our final tests were on a cut bank, which we, we cleaned off a profile and took soil samples here and uh, magnetic susceptibility here. And with these two uh, data collections, we uh, created this graph, which um, helped us determine major breaks in the strata. And also, as you can see, this right here is where the legacy sediment ends. So the legacy sediments have a higher magnetic content than uh, the uh, gray alluvial uh, historic topsoil. So it just helps us determine um, breaks in stratigraphy and where the legacy sediment ends. Also, we found, uh, it's hard to see, there's orange flags uh, at the bottom here. We found uh, charcoal samples, which we're going to use for carbon dating. Um, this is a completed profile of, of the whole uh, range 19, and compared to uh, the 1940s, it's very similar, like I said, however, we were more accurate in that we could uh, better locate a uh, water table and also bedrock. Since we did get deeper in some of the, uh, the probing locations, we have a more exact location of, of the bedrock uh, location. 
And also, this little red dot here corresponds with this green line, which is an even older uh, historic topsoil, an even older buried horizon. And so, um, what we, the discussion here, what we found was that minimal rates of erosion have uh, occurred, and more significantly, uh, the change in the, in the river is, is uh, more significant than the, the rates of erosion that are active in the area. Um, also, we determined that most erosion in this area occurred before the 1930s. However, we don't have exact dates for the stratigraphy yet. Um, and that's part of our uh, future work. Um, we need to determine uh, using carbon-14 dating and cesium-137 tests to get exact dates for uh, um, levels of erosion um, within the profile. And also, my test is only on one range. There's 39 other transects here within the watershed, so that it could be replicated over and over again. And finally, the uh, particle size. If we learn the percentage of sand, silt, and clay within the watershed, we can get a better understanding of, of the actual makeup, the physical layout of the land. And that's legacy sediments. <laughs>